All this week, CBS 12 News is looking for answers to why our kids can't read. Today, we're talking about dyslexia and the challenging process of getting children diagnosed and making sure they get the help they need to succeed. He's amazing. He's an awesome kid. But Stephanie Salamone's son has struggled since day one of preschool. In second grade, a school psychologist told her he had attention deficit disorder, but years of treatment didn't seem to do any good. So she got a private evaluation and he tested positive for dyslexia. And I sat there and I was like, well, what about ADHD? And she's like, no, it presents like ADHD because when he's looking at the page, he gets really fidgety. And I f went home that night and I looked everything up and I was mind blown how like he was almost in fifth grade and nobody caught this. The National Institute of Health reports nearly one in five people have dyslexia or a similar learning disability. But Tara Wallace, a former Palm Beach County teacher and administrator, says the number of kids getting help from the school district to address dyslexia is far lower than that. My entire career, I've worked at Title I schools. Um, schools who are traditionally low performing, right? Literacy rates are typically low. I've never seen a student diagnosed with dyslexia. Tara spent her career teaching kids how to read, so imagine her frustration when she couldn't teach her own son. I read to him every single night, and I just, I couldn't figure out what was going wrong. And then she started asking another question. How could no one at his school figure it out either? He had classic symptoms of dyslexia, including confusing similar words like cat and caught, spelling erratically, an inability to focus when there are distractions and difficulty distinguishing between left and right. Still, no one caught on or Tara believes they didn't want to see what was right in front of them. Did you feel like you were getting at least a fair shake from the district that they were at least trying to help your son? No, I believe a lot of it is compliance, right? It was a check in the box. Sometimes there's just not enough hours in the day. That's Valerie Harris, another former Palm Beach County School District employee. She coordinated what are called individual education plans, or IEPs. Those plans outline how the school serves students with special needs, from profound disabilities to minor learning deficiencies. An IEP meeting is the key moment for a parent to get the help their child needs. Many times um, I would um, be rushed out of an IEP meeting because you know I had seven IEP meetings that day and I felt that um, that parent really wasn't getting as much information as they needed. But Florida parents have the right to demand their kids' educational needs are met by public schools and it can pay to have help in that fight. Very intimidating for parents to go into IEP meetings. Ashley Ravello is an advocate who specializes in childhood dyslexia. There's an intrinsic belief and trust that the school would want what is best for my child. So why is an advocate needed? So we think that, right? We put our trust and faith in our education system to provide the best education possible to our children. And unfortunately, there's very limited resources in our schools, and there's not enough teachers to help children that have disabilities. Another complication is the term dyslexia is not typically included in an IEP. Instead, the student is listed as having a specific learning disability. That's an umbrella term for a number of related deficiencies. So a teacher could look at an IEP and still not know exactly what help a student needs. Once an IEP is drafted, it becomes a legal document, which the district, school, and teacher are bound to follow. That's another reason, Ashley says, district there's staff may be enough. reluctant to enough. issue one. There's not enough support or staff to help with all of the IEPs, so they'd rather just not write them. It's easier that way. Ashley took her son out of public school when he was diagnosed with dyslexia, and Valerie Harris's dyslexic daughter wasn't getting the help she needed either, so she quit her job to teach Abby at home full time. Tara Wallace hired a private tutor for her dyslexic son, and it remains a struggle. He hates school. He does. But as a working single mom, Stephanie Salamone says she doesn't have those options. I tried to get him into a better rated school, so I applied through the McKay Scholarship, and luckily he did go to better schools, schools that were supposed to be able to really help him with his learning disability, and I've become very close with the ESC department. But even so, like if that's the best school in Palm Beach County, we're not doing so great. It, it's been really hard. Leah Cap has always been a bright girl, 
But from a very young age, Daniel and Nicole Cap knew there was something off when it came to her reading. You're in first grade and you read the picture book and the story would say, and the pony jumped over the fence and she would read, the horse jumped over the wall. That's because she wasn't really reading. And the Caps had seen this before. Leah's older brother has dyslexia and her first grade teacher thought Leah probably did too. Leah's brother was getting help through the University of Miami. The Caps took Leah there and she tested positive for dyslexia and ADHD. The Caps believed going into second grade, Leah would be able to get the extra help she needed at her public school in Palm Beach County. They were wrong. You know, as a parent, I come to them and I, and I trust that they're gonna lead me down the proper path but they, we found out later they weren't. An evaluator at the school said that Leah was disorganized, unmotivated, and easily distracted. They attributed her struggles in reading to ADHD, not dyslexia. The school district kept saying, no, 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 she's fine. Uh, she hasn't failed yet. She's not bad enough. And she came home and she was in tears. She came home crying. She said, they are not gonna teach our daughter to read. I said to my wife, I said, they are going to teach our daughter to read. They are going to give her an IEP. An IEP is an individualized education plan. It's a roadmap for a student that is deemed to need specialized instruction and sets goals and lists services that the school district needs to provide by law. If a student needs an IEP and is not given one, a school district could be found in violation of the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act which states that all children with disabilities, no matter how severe, must be able to have a free public education with services to help their disability. If you as a parent feel your child has a disability, but the school district disagrees, you can fight for an IEP. The Cavs filed a state complaint and hired an attorney, forcing the district to give Leah a full evaluation for dyslexia. What they did in the process of testing her was they stretched that testing out and did it as slowly as they possibly could. When they did get a final report about a year later, again, it said Leah was about average and that her dyslexia was not severe enough for extra help. But parts of the school psychologist's report were missing and some of the report's findings did not make sense to the caps. Now it completely contradicted the professor at the University of Miami who basically spent her whole career in reading disabilities and learning disabilities and identification of learning disabilities. Well, something was wrong. The Caps reached out to the dyslexia expert who created the test that speech pathologist was using, a Dr. Nikki Nelson at Western Michigan University. Dr. Nelson looked at the results from Leah's test and said the speech pathologist must have misread the manual on how to conduct the test. Leah definitely has dyslexia. During the next eligibility meeting with the district, Daniel made sure to bring up Dr. Nelson's claim that the speech pathologist misread the manual and did not administer the test correctly. We thought that through this negotiating process that the school district would relent and say, oh, I guess the world's expert says she has a problem. And the answer was no. The caps were beginning to feel like they were not being taken seriously and that maybe the district was actively trying to keep their daughter from getting an IEP. At one of the meetings, the speech pathologist of school district, she wore a t-shirt to the meeting. These were all on Zoom. And the t-shirt actually said, I read the test manual too. And she did that to make fun of me. In a later deposition, the speech pathologist testified that t-shirt was not to offend the caps, but rather was made for personal inspiration because she had felt intimidated during previous meetings with Daniel. But according to the deposition, she did show it off to the other district personnel at the meeting. And the caps say everyone laughed. I'm appalled by how they acted. They were so unprofessional. I can't even believe somebody would treat people like the way they did. Also, teachers that had originally said Leah had shown signs of dyslexia had gone quiet. Through emails and testimony during hearings, the teachers said they were led to believe by district officials that they were getting sued by the caps which was not true. And they were told the parents are suing us, don't say anything. The attorney and the management of the school district went so far as to intimidate the teachers so that the teachers wouldn't help us. The Caps moved Leah to the Bill Graff School, a private school in West Palm Beach that specializes in dyslexic instruction, but they still wanted to hold the school district accountable. And the Caps filed for a due process hearing in the summer of 2021 after a request for mediation failed. The hearing itself happened over the course of four days in April of last year. And the judge ruled that the Caps were right and that school officials were treating the meetings and evaluations of Leah as a quote, mere formality, adding the school staff simply ignored the needs of this student 
and was condemned to allow the parents to continue to provide the dyslexia interventions the school should have been providing the entire school year. Then when ordered to go through the eligibility process, the school board doubled down and predetermined the services on the IEP shutting out meaningful parental input. The judge ordered the district to compensate the CAPS for reading services designed specifically for Leah's reading needs and reimburse them for tuition at the Billgraf School. Would you allow either one of your kids to go to a Palm Beach County School District school after this? No, absolutely not. Not the way they treated us. They were very deliberate and they were very personal and they really showed me that they absolutely do not care one bit for our child at all. Every kid should have that opportunity because if you can't read, you can't become a TV anchor, you can't become an astronaut because you have to read and do math, you can't become a doctor, you can't be a lawyer. And so if the school district is not going to help these kids, they're really choosing the winners and losers and it's sad. This is Literacy Night at Citrus Cove Elementary School in Boynton Beach. Parents, teachers, and kids sharing their love of reading. Practice, practice, practice. Dr. Natalie Cromwell, the principal at Citrus Cove, is hosting the first in what she hopes will be many of these nights to get parents more engaged in their children's literacy education. I felt that this was very important to plan this evening in order to create that school home connection. I asked some of the parents and students why they thought so many kids right now are struggling to read. A common answer kept coming up. So many distractions are keeping kids away from books. I think, you know, it's, uh, being motivated and uh, sitting down to learn to read, I think it's difficult for a six-year-old, but, you know, I think he's, he's, he's doing it. Is there specific things that she struggles with? The motivation to read, you know, in a world full of tablets and other things, sitting down with a book can be a challenge sometimes. So how do you do it? Rewards. Just try to find some motivation, make it fun. My teacher, she normally says if you, you don't like a subject, that's because you just don't know it yet. Experts say that's the key. Find ways to get your kids to fall in love with reading. We have a roll and read, which is like a, a sight word game that parents can play together where they get to roll numbers and find words and read them together. So it makes that learning fun, but also interacting in a positive way with their children. I mean, teachers only have a set amount of time during the day, right? Yes. to be able to teach kids how to read. It's got to keep going, right, throughout the in, entire of the day, entire of the week, and all year long. Absolutely, and if it's important to the parents, it's going to be important to the children. School board member Erica Whitfield hopes other schools will join Citrus Cove hosting these literacy nights. She says the district does not take the disappointing literacy numbers lightly. I think it is actually the most important thing that we do here at the district is making sure that students are ready to go out in the world and can consume any information that they want to and be able to judge it critically. Whitfield tells me what the district is doing to get kids kindergarten ready, to interact more with parents, and to add more training for teachers will start to get more kids where they need to be. Right now we're at about 54% of the schools reading on grade level at third grade, and we would really like to see that get into the 70s and 80s. In addition to what's happening in schools, there's plenty of free community resources for kids and parents. The Literacy Coalition of Palm Beach County provides services to over 50,000 kids in the county. That's where these kids are getting some free after-school tutoring, but they also provide free books to families and some in-school help. Through the Grow Lit Project, Leroy Kelson is actively working. I think you have to cultivate a love for reading very early on in life. I think as kids um, continue to get older and they don't have access to it, they grow with this, a disdain for it. And of course, there's the Palm Beach County Library System, whose 17 branches boast after-school events and activities, and access to millions of books, all with a free library card. After all of that, if you feel like your child may have an issue with dyslexia or another reading deficiency, talk to your child's teacher about it. That's always the first place to go. But if you feel strongly that you need help from outside the school, former Exceptional Services Education Director and mother of a daughter with dyslexia, Valerie Harris says you should talk to an advocate. If they recommend that you fight for a particular service, definitely fight the district. In Palm Beach schools, um, those are the parents that get the services they need. If they are loud enough and create enough problems for the district, then they are going to do a better job serving your student. But that is a last resort. There are a lot of people and resources out there for struggling readers. 
What's most important is that you understand what is out there and what your child needs.